it's important that we be taken through certain important statements in the word of God on how we can be super successful, how we can attain to God's goal for our lives, how we can be filled with all of the fullness of God. The Lord said to me, there are three kinds of people in the family of God that we always prosper. He said, number one, those that fear God. Number two, the faithful. Number three, those that honor his word. Three kinds of people that we always prosper in the family of God. So which of these are you? You know, in, in pursuing fullness, in desiring to become who God has made you and who God wants you, that is fundamentally something we must have. And if that thing is missing in our lives, no matter how much we try to attain to fullness, it will always remain an elusive concept for us. So you want to know what that is really? It is giving preciousness to the Word of God. Treating the word of God as the most precious thing in your life. It shouldn't be that because we heard it before. We should therefore abandon it for something new. No. No. There is so much blessing in that message we have not we have not gleaned yet. So much blessing in that message we haven't taken yet. Like Paul talked about the fullness of the blessing. So I want us to have the listening again. On that very word. And I tell you something. As we listen again, the Bible tells us. Once has he spoken and twice have we heard it. So let's go hear it a second time. Because of the benefits of giving special meditation to the word of God. So God wants you to have the absolute dominion. Hey, look at me. God wants you to have the absolute dominion. And in, 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 in the entire of creation, only the creator can have the absolute dominion. So, how am I going to have the absolute dominion? He showed us from the beginning. The only way to have absolute dominion is to be like me. To be like me is to fellowship like me. That's how I got fellowship with Adam. Satan came and interfered with fellowship. As he's still doing with you today. Your office will not let you fellowship. Cares of life will not let you fellowship. Because the more you fellowship with God, the more like God you become. Because the moment you, you became born again, you became Satan's worst enemy. His worst enemy. They got born again. He will come at anything you have. He will come at anything that's important to you. That we can put him where he belongs. We can deal with him. I need you to hear that while you write, we can deal with the devil the way we choose. We have the ability to do it. We have the divine weaponry to do it. We can deal with the devil the way we choose. It takes growth to make that happen. It takes spiritual growth to make that happen. Are you there? Who will have all men saved? Who would have all men saved and who come to the knowledge of the truth? Listen, listen. The word of God has four levels of expressions. The word of God has four levels of expressions. Number one, the way. Number two, the truth. Number three, the life. Something so simple is what is it writing. The way, the truth, the life. Number four, the glorified life. 
Number four, the glorified Haba. Jesus Christ. The glorified life. Eh? Did you hear that? In that place, you have the glorified life. You can also have slash the manifested life. All right? Did you hear that? <clears throat> the manifested life. What is the endless expectations of, cre- of, the, of the creation? The manifestations of the sons of God. I want to, I want to do this to you right now because it's a must. When you become born again, you are brought into fellowship with the way. You are brought into contact with the way. You hear me? As you fellowship with the way, you come to know the truth. You shall know the truth. Are you getting it now? You come to know the truth. Are you listening? You come to know the truth. Sit down, please. He says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. All right? Come to know the truth. As you fellowship with the truth, It produces life. Right? What is life? Reality. Life is reality. Life is life is reality. Okay? As you interact with life. With reality, you become the manifested and glorified reality. Manifested and glorified reality. I like it when it's like a strange thing. You are writing, but you don't, you're not supposed to know what I'm talking about. It's very good like that. Spirit in confusion. <laughs> are, you, are you done now? Okay. How many of you are aware that eternal life is a person? Eternal life which you receive is actually a person. Father, help us, 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 help us. Eternal life is a person. Only eternal life 
can have the absolute mastery over creation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was going to answer something, so better let's, let's go. It, it, it's good that you, you are looking like somebody that they throw jazz after. Throw jazz and you can't seem to know what I'm, what I'm doing at this point. It's nice. Hallelujah. First John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 7. Everybody look at the screen right now. I, 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 you know I, why I brought you here? You want to know why I brought you here? You want to know why I brought you here? You want to know why I brought you here? Okay, let's do my brother. I brought you here. You, 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 you got that? So you get now. You, you are there now. You see it now? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you. But no, but it's the truth. They just uh, read it. It's done. It's done. And then you go out there and uh, everywhere is, is showing everywhere. You understand? Okay. My God, that which was from the beginning, what was it called? The Word. In the beginning was the word. All right? So look at your screen, everybody. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, the word, which we have seen with our eyes, the way, which we have looked upon, the truth, and our hands have handled the life. Of the word of life, right? Next verse. For the life was manifested. For the life was manifested. And we have seen it. And bear witness. And show, show unto you that eternal life. We have shown you that eternal life. Not a written thing. A person. We have shown you that eternal life which was with the Father as the Word. Shh, shh, shh. You want to stand? Which was with the Father as the Word and was manifested unto us as eternal life a person. Shh, 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 shh. Watch, watch. Something I'm telling you. When he was manifested to us, he had the absolute mastery over everything. You get that now? He had the absolute mastery over everything. I'm taking you somewhere. Because I started this program with the death of somebody. I told you about the man. And I was about to say something and I paused. I'm going back there for a reason. You think one day God said, heaven is too tight, Jesus go and die. And then he died. So, okay, everyone is now very calm to come back. <laughs> if you study in the Poland episode, it tells you the eternal purpose which God proposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, it is man manifest to his sins. Listen, the devil is watching, listening to me, and, and listening very well. After the meeting, he's going to check how many understood. Those who don't, he steals the word. The Bible says, the God says, a man hears the word and didn't understand it and then commit the devil and steals the word. Say with me, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. after all I've gone through, the devil will not steal the word. From my, from my heart, it will prosper. 
it will prosper. I will become that eternal life manifested for all to see. This is my year of manifestation, perfection. When the Lord shall be up, Zion, that is me. When the Lord shall beat me up through this message, I will appear in his glory. Amen! Jesus said, when any man hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, the devil comes and takes the, the word away. Don't let the devil take it. So how do you prevent that from happening? By understanding it. How do you make it, how do you understand it? By meditating it. When you meditate, it mingles with your spirit. And so that I cannot steal it. You meditate it. It says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of their mouth. It says, so you will have to meditate it day and night. Day and night. How many of you do night and day and night meditation? How many of you? That's it. How many of you? You only read Bible portion, you don't meditate. You should have meditation time in the day and meditation night at night. It doesn't have to be much. If on your, on your um, daily plan, if your, your daily calendar has a, a room for meditation, split it into two. For example, I have a daily calendar that begins with 12 a.m. at night and ends 12 a.m. the next night. as my calendar. So 12 a.m. to so and so a.m., it's my prayer time, my watch and prayer. I watch and I pray for hours. Something a.m. to the other a.m. is my sleep because I don't sleep at night. I sleep in the morning. I did it that's my calendar. So something a.m. to something a.m. I sleep. The after I sleep, something a.m. to something a.m. I study my Bible. After my Bible, I take, I have the time for breakfast, which I hardly take. Breakfast and bath. After my bath, it is time to go for a moment with the Lord, media prayer. After my media prayer, everything about spiritual is put to rest. And I come to the work of the day. Maybe it's a literature. I don't call it a Christian literature a spiritual act, even though they are Christian literatures. If it's not that one, I'm structuring ministry. And apart from the daily calendar, there's also the, the, the weekly structure. For example, the work I do on Monday is not what I do on Tuesday. So my week is split. I have Monday, Tuesday for one kind of work, Wednesday alone for one type, Thursday, Friday for one type, Saturday for one type, Sunday for one. I arrange my week. And then the daily timetable. So, if you, if you have a timetable, you will not say, okay, if I, if I was able to meditate from this time to this time, every day, I will not split it. Half in the day, half at night. So, it's okay, so when do I meditate? Before you go to bed. Before you go to bed. Meditate. Sleep meditating the word. All right? Sleep, meditate in the world, and see what happens when you wake up. You can't be, you can't go to bed a spirit meditating football. No, think about it. How can a spirit go to bed meditating football? How can the spirit go to bed meditating woman? Meditating backside? Meditating emotion? Spirit? 
the spirit should slip off in his realm. They are not, they are not from other spirits. How can the spirit be a man you find? <laughs> Jesse spirit. I want you to end every form of fanaticism you have. Can be a fan of this club. End it. Only just love the club. Don't be a fan. Don't ever say we are winning. It, you are a spirit. Spirit don't have football club. <laughs> you know, for some, I'm, I'm just saying my own. Now listen, listen, spirits, listen. No problem. I'm saying my own. Wala. Please, buy Jesse. Buy football. Hold them. When it is time to check the mark of the price, please hold your football. Hold your Jesse. Hold it. Hold it tight. We will see who called. Whether you called God, God called you. We will see. We will see. I'm advising you to keep it from what is coming. That says my arm say. At least you cannot watch football. Watch it. But you don't say we kill on her today. There's no way. Don't personalize it. I don't have a football club. I only have a football player I like. So if he moves to a club, I'm, I, just, I just follow him. I now watch their match. So anytime he leaves the club, I, I leave. <laughs> That's where I am. I don't have time for clubs. Love your neighbors. I love footballer. <laughs> but that's not my business, Steve. I can say, I don't want to watch and I won't watch. I'll check the score. Whether I watch or I don't watch, it's the same score. I can see the score. You invest your emotion. You will cause the referee. You will cause... <laughs> You cause the footballer. You even cause his parents. <laughs> and then a spirit will now come to God in prayer to repent of earthly affair. And so God, a spirit, you know what club didn't do it, eh? And then God asks you, you mean so we need club? God has all God knows. Only, the only thing God knows about so we need. All of that things, he doesn't know. That. Jesus is in there for football clubs. So when it's all God knows. So if you are talking so when he can understand. Otherwise, <laughs> any other thing you're talking about, you are in trouble. And bring God say, Father God, I am pleading with you. Give Jesse a win today. Eh? And I know many of you think, oh. I speak and they happen. Reverend spoke and the club won. Well, that's another realm. I don't take you to why I speak for club to win. You soon understand why I do that. You look for channels to exercise how manifested of his glory you have become. You don't understand. See, as a man of God, learn to check how anointed you are with things around you. Start learning to lay hands on something, certain area. Lay hands on, on, on your car and see what's going on with the car. If there are still regular repairs, know that the anointing is not yet there. Lay hands on things to, to experiment how anointed you are. You say your car has been giving you trouble. Did you dedicate the car when you bought it? Maybe you don't dedicate anything. I dedicate everything, including food. You bought a new phone. The next thing you thought, the line, you even tear, you use your mouth to tear. Tia. And the next thing, you can't wait to put your sim. So you couldn't dedicate the phone to the Lord. You don't dedicate the phone. The, you bought shoes and just put your leg in there. You couldn't dedicate the shoes. When they go shop for my grocery, I, I, I bless them. I bless them. Demons can follow these things home. You bought, you bought biscuit. It was biscuit. You bought your money. You ate it. From that to now, 
You have been having stolen stomach. You don't know what happened. Pure water. I don't want to scare you. Like I said, you are, more, you are too powerful for the devil. You are, more, you are superior to, this, to Satan in authority, in operation, in everything. You are superior to Satan. Hallelujah. Let's catch it quickly. Quickly. All right. Look at it. It's on the screen now. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us as a person. Eternal life is a person. He said that life is in his son, Jesus. He who has the son has the life. Eternal life is a person. Hallelujah. Eternal life is a person. Eternal life can be transmitted from your spirit to your body. Depending on how renewed your mind is. From your spirit to your body. Depending on how renewed your mind is. Do you understand that? Eternal life can be transmitted from your spirit to your body. Depending on how renewed your mind is. So you can choose to renew your mind for easier transmission or you can choose to leave your mind re um, unrenewed for the devil to keep doing what he's doing. Next verse, quickly. Come on, go to the screen quickly for your own good because this thing I'm telling you, I've known them, I know them and I've always known them. I can live here with them and you'll be left in the dark. That which we have seen and heard Declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. Have you seen it? So after everything, fellowship comes next. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Next verse. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Can you imagine that? That your joy may be full. Next verse. Everybody read. One, two, read. Next verse. Last verse. Hear me, hear me. Fellowship is only possible in the context of light. I have told you that. You can't fellowship with God if you don't know his word. You cannot fellowship with God if you do not know his word. Did you hear that? Listen, you cannot fellowship with God if you do not know his word because fellowship is not possible outside of the word of God. Fellowship is not possible outside of the word of God. Fellowship with God only happens in the environment of his word. You can't fellowship with God with football match. You can't fellowship with God with the things that are outside of his word. There are many of you who don't understand why you are not fellowship with God. It's because the word of God is not in your spirit. It's not in your spirit. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. Full stop. If you want to have fellowship with God, you must have his word. Are you listening to me? This is not a thing to take for granted. By all means, are we clear? 
So look at what led to all of these many, many, uh, many, many uh, talks, what they call it. So I, I sat down and I began, I began to feel very angry. I was displeased that a man who had done so much for the kingdom, they start networks. My God, where Bishop T.D. Jakes, Ben Heaney, Reverend Douglas, Kenny Copeland, and all of them have been able to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. How can, how can this man, how can this man who came out and condemned the COVID conspiracy and the vaccine idea and said to the whole world, never and God is our defense. And having said that, the COVID issue got complicated and he died. My God. And David said, let it not be mentioned in cards. Publish it not in Ashkelon. Let not the daughters of the uncircumcised rejoice. How are the mighty falling? Diet saw as one not anointed. How could you die of COVID? He hurt me. He offended me. He broke me. I said, Lord, Christians suffer too much. What do you do about it? How are you God? What are the angels busy doing on earth? What is their job for, for, for Christ's sake? What do we need angels for if we suffer what the, the unbelievers suffer? The company of innumerable angels, who, who, what number do we know about them? All these angels, self. I was angry. I was talking in my anger, not because I lost something, but because a dead brother died of COVID complications. And I read the story from New York Times, Washington Post, and all of that, and I was so bitter. I felt we've been, we've been humiliated by God in this world. He, I said, I felt like he always exposed, exposed us to be, to be ridiculed by men. And I was talking to the Lord without, without care. I was bitter. I was pointing out my heart. We, also, we suffer too much. What is the essence of being born again? We just, we just go through things. And then I began to feel that some of these men of God said they are just covering up. So these things they say, self, I was just angry. And then the Spirit of God whispered to me for my own good. <laughs> and he said, the Lord will answer you, but let me advise you. <laughs> Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be swift to hear, be slow to speak, be slow to wrath, for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God for your own good. Because you could die in this your anger. You could cross the line with God. Because what you, not, what you do not know will put you in trouble. God spoke and I said, take a Bible and write and go and tell the church. You notice I almost started it. I had to shut up because the saints came tired on Thursday. I had to shut up. I didn't only shut up, I also had to repent. And I found out that it hurts God more than it hurts us when his sins are defeated. Are you there? Judges. Look up Judges chapter 10. Verse 16. Judges chapter 10. Verse 16. Want to read. Want to read? Sorry. 
whose soul was grieved. The soul of God was grieved for the misery of Israel. So it hurts God when we are hurt. In their affliction, he was afflicted. It hurts God when we are hurt or when we are hurting. So, if he hurts him while we are hurting, why then does he not do something? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 116, verse 15. Psalms 116, verse 15. On the screen, everybody, want to read. Is that not what you think? It didn't say so. It's wrong. Let me tell you what it says. Listen, I want you to read it. This is not me trying to change the scripture. Listen to it. I'm reading from the com complete Jewish Bible. And listen. Are you listening to me? It says, from Adonai's point of view, the death of those faithful to him is very costly. In other words, costly in the sight of God is the death of a saint. It's very costly. Have we invested Holy Spirit and grace, a saint dies. It's very costly. It's not precious, it's costly. That means it's a loss to God when a saint dies. Did you hear that? It is a loss to God when a saint dies. It's not a gain. You see, but Paul said to die is gain when you have finished your course. You did not read your Bible. To die is gain for you, not for God. Because when you die, you enter into peace. But it's a loss to God. Because his investment did not yield optima. Those of you who did MMM. I'm sure you remember when it has increased and you didn't want to remove it. Because you felt that that would be a loss compared to what your, your mates have made. Your mates made so much. You said, no, 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 I can't. Let me, let me, let it keep rising. Let it keep rising. Because if I remove now, this guy made more than I did. I, I did so. Let me let it rise. And while it was rising, it, it disappeared. And you were dancing. It did sweet meal. But that what happened? It was painful because an investment has been lost. Painful in the sight of God is the death of a saint. That means, left for God, you should not die. So when Brother Marcus Lamb died, the Lord was pained in his heart. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you making sense out of it? And so, so the Lord said, We take a barrel, a ride, but first I was advised for my own good. After the advice, I wrote. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. This is the beginning of the meeting with the Lord, what he told me. I want you to hear from the Lord directly today. So that we we'll become careful when we are angry about what we don't know. Want to read. Are you listening to me? Okay. And so, the Lord said, read, read and I read, he said, what? Hey, look up. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Which, which, which you have of God, and you are not your own? Next verse. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, I hope you are looking at the shift of responsibility. For you are bought with a price. Full stop. I have bought you. Therefore, glorify God in your body. In other words, let nothing attack it. I give you the assignment. Nothing must attack that body. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are gosh, I have made you the custodian of this thing. Nothing must go wrong with it. And the virus comes and attacks and you blame God. You should be afraid that happened because you have got to deal with. Malaria came and you died, you're in trouble. Better follow. Leave this, screen, leave this on the screen for a moment, please, for a while. I have bought you with a price. The matter is over. You are no longer Satan's slave. I have bought you. You are free from Satan. You are free from everything about the devil. I have bought you. I have transported you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of my dear son, Jesus Christ. But then, that's not how God said it to me. Because when God is angry, he can be very explicit before he judges you. Don't forget that. When God is angry, he can be very explicit before he judges you. Hallelujah. Quickly, just go ahead and take your offering right now to honor the Lord. Lord, we worship you with our offerings, with our tithe, with our first food, with our best food. In this final session of Compass Mendes, you have said in your word, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Let this end be more glorious and let it exceed all of the glories of the past sessions. Take us from this level. Bear us on the wings of the Spirit of God to another level. A new height of your glory. A new realm of your spirit. A new dimension of truth. Let your anointing saturate our offerings. And then come, to, come back to us with a harvest that is sudden, overflowing, and not sufficient, more than enough, with the praise and glory of the name, Lord, in Jesus' name.
want to mean this prayer. Just say with me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe all of the claims of your word. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus Christ was offered for my offenses. He died and was raised again to life for my justification. Today, I declare Jesus Christ is Lord. And I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith in you and in your word, I receive the remission for all my sins. I receive eternal life for my spirit. I declare this day I am born again. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I declare God as my Father. Father God, I thank you. And I ask you to come place your seal of ownership over me. I ask for the Holy Spirit of promise. And in Jesus' name, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Thank you, my Father. Today, I become a citizen of heaven and a member of the family of God. Father, come take your place in my life. The name of Jesus Christ. Oh, if you prayed that prayer, I just want you to, re- to, to open up yourself right now for the Holy Spirit to do a work in your life. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. For the rest of you in the meeting, I want you to join me to speak in other tongues for 60 seconds for those that have just received the Holy Spirit. And those that have just received the Holy Spirit right now, open your mouth and pray because you have just been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray right now. Go ahead. Come and take your place, O Lord. The rest of the Spirit of speaking in other tongues. Come and take your place, O oh Lord, in my life. Come and take glory to God, your place. Yes, Lord. In my life. Come and take your place.